Are you ready to move beyond major and minor chords? In this video, I'll show you a wide range of chords, including seventh, sus, and extended chords. This is not an exhaustive list of possible chord types, but will arm you with enough chord knowledge to cover a wide range of musical styles and genres. It will also provide examples of how to use these chords in progressions. Let's begin with diminished chords. A diminished chord is constructed with three notes. This is known as a triad. In notation, the diminished chord can be shown by using the dim or a small elevated circle next to the chord letter. In chord progressions, diminished chords feature as the seven chord in a major key. When constructing chords, we often use numbers. These numbers refer to the seven notes of the major scale. A diminished chord is constructed with the first or root note, the flat or minor third, and the flat or lowered fifth. You may see this written like this, one, flat three, flat five. An easy way to remember this is as a minor chord with the fifth note dropped by a semitone or half a step. This is why it is sometimes known as a minor flatted fifth. Let's use an example to clarify the diminished chord construction. The C major scale has the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B. The first note is C, third note is E, and the fifth note is G. These notes create the C major chord. If we drop the third note by a semitone or half a step to E flat, then we create a C minor chord. If we take the C minor chord and drop the fifth note by a semitone or half a step to G flat, then we have a C diminished chord. You can hear how dissonant and harsh this chord sounds. They can also be difficult to play on the guitar. For these reasons, diminished chords are not often used in popular music without alteration. If they are used, it is usually as a passing chord to minimise the dissonant effect. This difficult but unique sound is always worth your consideration as a songwriter. The rare use of the diminished chord could help your song to stand out from the crowd. Next up are augmented chords. You just heard a C augmented chord. Augmented chords are written in notation with a plus symbol next to the chord letter. You may also see them written with AUG or sharp five next to the chord letter. How do we construct the augmented chords? Chords are created by using notes from a scale. We will use the major scale, also known as the Ionian mode, for our point of reference in this video. Major chords are created with three notes, first, third and fifth. To create an augmented chord, we take these three notes and raise the fifth note by half a step or a semitone. This gives us first, third and sharp fifth. Let's clarify this with an example. The C major scale has the following notes, C, D, E, F, G, A and B. To create a C major chord, we take the first, third and fifth, which gives us C, E and G. If we take the fifth note G and raise it by a half step, we get G sharp. C augmented therefore has the notes C, E and G sharp. Let's have a listen to C major and C augmented played after one another to appreciate the difference. Augmented chords have an uncomfortable tension to them. They are neither major nor minor and have a strange awkwardness. Because of this, they are most often used as passing chords, leading the listener somewhere else. An interesting feature of the augmented chords is that they cannot be inverted. Inverting a major chord involves playing the third or fifth note as the lowest note or root note instead of the first note. If we take the C augmented chord we heard earlier with the notes C, E and G sharp, we can attempt two inversions. With the E is the lowest note, we get E, G sharp and C. This is an E augmented chord. If we use G sharp as the lowest note, we get G sharp, C and E, which is a G sharp augmented chord. 
So there are actually only four sets of notes that create augmented chords. These notes are always two whole steps or four half steps apart from one another. This symmetry defines the augmented chord. It is also worth knowing that minor chords cannot have an augmented slash sharp fifth note. They simply become major chord first inversions. For example, C minor has the notes C, E flat slash D sharp and G. If we raise the fifth by a semitone, we get C, E flat slash D sharp, and A flat slash G sharp. This is the first inversion A flat slash G sharp major chord. How do we use the augmented chords? As we saw earlier, the C augmented chord has a note in it from outside of the C major scale, so it isn't strictly in the key of C major. However, it has lots of applications in a major key, so we will use it in our C major key examples. One of the most popular ways to use the augmented chord is as the five chord. The five chord in a major key is often used to take us back to the one chord. The augmented chord provides a tenser sound on the 5 chord which really sounds like it wants to resolve so when we move to the 1 chord the resolution is strong and satisfying. This can also add surprise in a song that has the 5 to 1 change earlier and then in a later repeat uses 5 augmented to 1. Listen out for the 5 augmented chord at work in the second half of this progression. Before we move to the next chord progression, I'd like to thank you for choosing to watch this video. We rely on your kind support to keep the channel running. If you are able to help us, we now have channel memberships and super thanks available. These allow us to keep on making songwriting content that is available to everyone. Click on thanks and join below this video to find out more. The tension in the augmented sharp fifth note means that it wants to resolve up or down a half step. So the chord that follows the augmented chord should have a note in it that provides this movement. This introduces the idea of voice leading, where a particular note in a chord is leading us to a note in the next chord. It helps the listener anticipate the next chord. This is usually done in a stepwise motion, which anticipates a note a half step away. Here's a simple example of this using the one augmented chord. The sharp fifth note in C augmented is G sharp. The third note of the four chord F major is A, so this provides our stepwise resolution. We will also use the five augmented chord again as well. This voice leading idea will shape a lot of the augmented chord progressions we create. In this next example, we use the root note of the sixth chord to resolve the augmented one chord. We then fall back down to the augmented chord. We can also use different chord types to achieve this same effect. In this example, we never move from the one chord. We use the augmented chord again, and this time introduce the major sixth chord. So our motion is from the fifth note in the one chord to the sharp fifth note in the one augmented chord, and then to the sixth note in the one major sixth chord. We then fall back down to the augmented chord again.
If we return to the first progression we discussed, we can use this idea on the 5 chord. We will go from the major 5 to augmented, then to major 6th, and finally to dominant 7th. Listen out for the extended stepwise movement in the second half of this progression. In the next chord progressions we will use the flat 6, flat 7 and flat 3 chords. Despite using these new chords, our intention is the same, to produce stepwise voice leading with our progressions by using augmented chords. Listen out for this in the examples and see if you can work out what the notes are that are creating this effect in each chord. We'll now explore seventh chords, starting with major seventh. You just heard the C major seventh chord. Major seventh chords are written in notation with M A J seven. There are several types of seventh chords that you may have heard of. This can cause confusion, but just know that the major seventh is only one of these chords. How do we construct the major seventh chords? To create a major 7th chord, we take these three major chord notes and add a 7th note from the major scale. This note is half a step or a semitone below the root note. Let's clarify this with an example. The C major scale has the following notes. To create a C major chord, we take the 1st, 3rd and 5th, which gives us C, E and G. The seventh note in the scale is B. This is half a step below the root of C. So in order to create our C major seventh chord, we take the C major chord notes and add the seventh from the scale as a fourth note. This means that C major seventh has the notes C, E, G and B. Let's have a listen to C major and C major seventh played after one another to appreciate the difference. You can hear the dreamlike, romantic quality of the major 7th chord. It helps express gentle, intimate emotions. This lends itself to ballads, soul, jazz and more reflective songs. When played at a medium to slow tempo, the quality and nuance of the major 7th chord can be fully heard. Some people may refer to the major 7th sound as cheesy or cliché if overused. 
how can we use the major seventh chord? In traditional harmony, the major seventh chord occurs on chords one and four in the major key. A classic way to use the major seventh chord is to chain the one and four together and repeat them as required. This is often employed in ballads. Please note that the examples will be in the key of C major. If you want to transform your songwriting, then use the ultimate musical sketch pad, hook pad. We use hook pad to show you chord progressions and melodies in our videos because it is easy to use and intuitive. Click the link in the description below and see what hook pad can do for your music. Another simple way to use major seventh chords is to go from the standard major version to the major seventh. This can create interest and in this example gives the one to four change a feeling of four different chords. Another one of the seventh chords is the dominant seventh. If we follow the major seventh with a dominant seventh, then we create a sense of movement within the same chord. This is like an extension of the previous example. The root note stays the same, but a single note changes in the chord, descending in semitones or half steps. Starting on chord one, the most common chord to follow would be four, but we could also use two or six as they have the correct note for the semitone descent. We can also return to the major 7th after the dominant 7th. Each of the three major chords in a major key have a special relationship with one of the three minor chords in the key. These are called relative minors. For the one chord its relative minor is 6 and the four chord has the relative minor of 2. The major 7th chord can be a useful transition from the major chord to its relative minor. For example, if a major 7th is used for chord 5, the sense of key is weakened. Flat 3, flat 6 and flat 7 can be turned into major 7th chords and not violate the scale of the key you are in. However, they can create harmonic ambiguity. This can be both good and bad, depending on what sound you are trying to achieve. As always, experiment and trust your ear. It is your best guide. Here is an example using flat 7. just heard a C minor 7th chord. The minor 7th chords are shown in notation with the chord letter followed by a small m and a number 7. The chord that just played is called C minor major 7th. This chord can be shown several ways in notation but we will use the chord letter followed by a small m then a slash, the letters M A J and the number 7. How do we construct these chords? To create a minor 7th chord, we take these three minor chord notes and add a flat or minor 7th note from the major scale. This note is a whole step or tone below the root note. To create the minor major 7th chord, we take the minor chord again, but this time we add the 7th note from the major scale. This note is half a step or a semitone below the root note. Let's clarify this with an example. The C major scale has the following notes. To create a C minor chord, we take the first, flat or minor third, and fifth, which gives us C, E flat, and G. The seventh note in this scale is B. This is half a step below the root of C. The flat or minor seventh note is B flat. This is a whole step below the root. So in order to create our C minor seventh chord, we take the C minor chord notes and add the flat 7th note from the scale as a 4th note. This means that C minor 7th has the notes C, E flat, G and B flat. To create C minor major 7th, we take the C minor chord notes again and this time we add the 7th note from the scale. C minor major 7th therefore has the notes C, E flat, G and B. 
Let's now listen to C minor, C minor 7th, and then C minor major 7th to appreciate the difference in sound between these chords. The minor 7th can be thought of as a diluted minor chord. It retains a sad quality, but could be considered less depressing than the standard minor. For this reason it is often paired with major chords because it is less jarring. It could also be considered jazzy because of its use in jazz music. The minor major 7th chord is a tense chord with a strange sound. It feels neither sad nor happy. Its threatening nature means it has an association with horror and thriller film soundtracks. Indeed, its use in the score for Psycho means that it is sometimes referred to as the Hitchcock chord. It is also utilised in the James Bond soundtracks to add that trademark unsettling sense of mystery. How can we use the minor 7th and the minor major 7th chords? Minor 7th chords can replace any standard minor in your chord progression if it is normally in the key. This means that in a major key, chords 2, 3 and 6 can become minor 7th. And in a minor key, it could be chords 1, 4 and 5. If you have turnarounds in your song that use the minor chords, you can lighten the mood of them by swapping out the minor chords for the minor 7ths. This can be useful where you want to contrast one section with another and hold back the stronger emotion of the full minor chords for a particular section. A good example of this would be contrasting a verse with a chorus, such as the following in the key of C major. Because minor sevenths add a fourth note, it means that more chords in a key will share notes in common. We can utilise this by linking chords that share notes. For example, Minor seventh chords can be used together by songwriters to create chromatic shifts. This is often used in jazz or jazz influence songs and involves a chord from outside of the key to create a step between minor sevenths. In this case we use a flat 3 minor 7th chord to achieve this effect. This is a minor chord whose root note is half a step or a semitone below the 3 chord. In the key of C major the 3 chord is E minor, so the flat 3 chord would be E flat minor. Let's have a look at this interesting idea in action. Minor sevenths also combine nicely with major sevenths to reinforce the smooth, jazzy feel. Listen to how this chord progression changes when we swap out the chords for major and minor sevenths. Now let's look at the minor major 7th chords. Beyond being played and held in isolation to create tension, they are often used alongside the minor and minor 7th chords to create a descending feeling on the same chord. This technique in A minor using the 1 and 4 chords could look like this. We can also use this technique to continue the descending feeling into the rest of a chord progression. For example, you just heard a C dominant 7 chord. Dominant 7 chords are written in notation with a 7 next to the letter. There is no DOM or D. After straight majors and minors, the most common chord type is the dominant 7. There are several types of 7th chords that you may have heard of. This can cause confusion, but just know that the dominant 7 is only one of these chords. 
How do we construct the dominant 7 chord? To create a dominant 7 chord, we take these three major chord notes and add a flat or minor 7th note from the major scale. This note is half a step or a semitone below the 7th note. Another way to think of it is as a whole step or tone below the root note. Let's clarify this with an example. The C major scale has the following notes. The 7th note in the scale is B. So our flat 7th note is half a step below this, which is B flat. This is also a whole step below the root note of C. So in order to create our C dominant 7 chord, we take the C major notes and add the flat 7 as a 4th note. This means that the C dominant 7 has the notes C, E, G and B flat. Let's have a listen to the C major and C dominant 7 played after one another to appreciate the difference. You can hear the strong dissonance of the dominant 7 and its desire to resolve to another chord. This tension is drawn from the hybrid nature of the dominant 7, drawing on major and minor scale notes. How can we use the dominant 7 chord? In traditional harmony, there is only one of these chords in the key, and it is on the fifth note, called the dominant. This explains the name dominant 7. The chord built from this fifth note is the 5 chord. However, because some popular music is based on blues harmony, the dominant 7 chord can also appear as chord 1 and chord 4. The primary use of the dominant 7 chord is as the 5 chord in order to resolve to the 1 chord. This reinforces the identity of the key. Here's how that could sound in the key of C major. If you have a chord progression that stays on 1, 4 or 5 for some time, you can go to a dominant 7 to make it feel less settled and add interest. For example, using the 1 dominant 7, A classic use of the dominant 7 is in the 12 bar blues. As we discussed earlier, this is primarily where the 1 and 4 dominant 7s will join the traditional 5 dominant 7. The influence of the blues on popular music means that you may have heard these chords in progressions more widely. Here's an example in C major. Time now for power chords. You just heard a C fifth chord. Fifth chords are written in notation with a number five next to the letter. You may also know them as power chords. How do we construct the fifth chords? So the thing that gives these notes their quality is the third and flat third note. If we take away this third note, we are left with the first and the fifth. These two notes make up a fifth or a power chord. Technically speaking, the fifth chord is not a chord at all. A chord traditionally has three or more notes. Having only two notes, the first and the fifth, means that a fifth chord could be called a dyad. The distance between the first note and the fifth is called a perfect fifth interval. Despite all of this, fifth or power chords are generally referred to as chords by musicians. If you are familiar with suspended chords, you know that they have their third or flat third note removed and then replaced. Because of this, the suspended chords are neither major nor minor. Fifth chords also lack the third note, but they don't have it replaced. Therefore, fifth chords are also neither major nor minor. This lack of quality makes them very versatile, as we will discuss later in this video. Let's clarify how to build fifth chords with an example. The C major scale has the following notes. If we take away the third note, we are left with the first and fifth, giving us a C fifth chord with the notes C and G. Let's have a listen to C major and C minor, followed by C fifth to appreciate the difference in sound.
Because they are stripped down to two notes, fifth chords can sound hollow, empty, and like they lack power. The power in power chords comes from using these simple dyads on an electric guitar played with distortion. They are used extensively in hard rock and heavy metal, which is why chord sheets from metal songs will often have pages full of fives. This tough sound isn't exclusively used with distortion. Different voicings of the fifth chord on guitar are used in other genres and styles. This can involve repeating the first and fifth note over several strings of the guitar to make for stark, bold, open chords. How can we use the fifth chords? As we discussed earlier, the fact that fifth chords have no type of third note means that they are very versatile. Whatever key you are in, you can easily replace any major or minor triads in your song with fifths. An easy starting point would be to take any existing chord progressions you have and swap in power chords. Let's start with changing all the chords in a simple 1-4-1-5 progression. Please note that fifth chords can also be written as no 3. This is because they don't have a third note. Our examples will be in the key of C major. Here's a chord progression that had minor chords in it originally, but is now fifths. Note how neutral it sounds where you expect to hear minor chords. You can use the neutral nature of the fifth chords to give the singer, soloist or bass player the ability to imply certain chords. This is achieved by playing or singing the third or flat third note from the relevant chord whilst the fifth chords are playing underneath. This gives the listener the experience of hearing the full chord. If we take our earlier 1-4-1-5 example, we can explore this idea. We will repeat the chord progression twice for a total of eight bars. In the first four bars, we play the third note from the relevant major chords over the power chords. Listen to how this expresses the happy feeling of the major chords. For the second four bars, we drop our melody notes half a step or a semitone. This produces flat third notes, shifting our implied chord progression to a 1-4-1-5 in the key of C minor. You can really feel the sad shift here. Fifth chords can also be used to contrast song sections. They are excellent at withholding a chord for later in a song, so its true nature isn't revealed until a key moment. This is because of the lack of third note masking the actual quality of the chord. For example, here we will use all fifth chords as an intro or verse, then repeat them as a chorus but as full triads. Listen to the change in feel with the full chords. Fifth chords can combine effectively with most other chord types. Here we take a simple progression from earlier and alternate between fifths and the major or minor version of the chord. Suspect 
suspended chords and major add nines go particularly well with fifth chords. Here is a simple 1-4-5 progression spiced up with fifths, add nines and a sus2. And here is a progression that is popular on guitar in certain keys. Note the use of the flat 7 and 1st inversion 4. Next up are suspended chords. You just heard the C sus4 chord. Sus4 chords are written in notation with lowercase sus than a number 4. The sus4 chord is one of two suspended chords. The other is called sus2. You just heard the C sus2 chord. Sus2 chords are written in notation with lowercase sus and then a number 2. How do we construct the suspended chords? So the thing that gives these notes their quality is the third and flat third note. A change of just a semitone or half a step changes the quality of these chords. If we remove this third note, then we strip the chord of its quality. It is neither major nor minor. It is suspended and wants to resolve to the major or minor to feel settled or grounded. If we add the fourth note in the major scale to the first and fifth, then we create a sus4 chord. If we add the second note in the major scale to the first and fifth, then we create a sus2 chord. Let's clarify this with an example. The C major scale has the following notes. To construct a C sus4 chord, we take out the third note and replace it with the fourth note, which gives us C, F and G. And to create a C sus2 chord, we add the second note to the first and fifth, which looks like C, D and G. Let's have a listen to C major, C minor, C sus4 and C sus2 played after one another to appreciate the difference. Suspended chords are generally emotive, ambiguous and intense. Sus4 is the more commonly used of the two chords. It is more focused and tense than Sus2 and has an ability to create a sense of conflict. Sus2 has a less tense, almost empty quality. It could also be considered as mysterious. How can we use the suspended chords? Sus chords are widely used in popular music because they are very versatile. All six major and minor chords in a key can be turned into sus chords. This applies to major and minor keys. If we are keeping strictly to the key and not using any notes out of the key, then in a major key we should avoid 3 sus2 and 4 sus4. In a minor key this would be 5 sus2 and 6 sus4. You will however come across these chords being used, and there are no right and wrong rules with songwriting. So the best advice, as always, is to experiment with these chords and trust your ear as to what sounds good or bad to you. Let's begin with the sus4 chord. The simplest use of the sus4 is whilst we are playing a single chord. You can alternate between the standard version of the chord and the sus4. This can add interest and momentum and stop the single chord becoming boring. This is often used to spice up the one chord. Please note that we will use the key of C major for our major key examples. turnaround is typically a two or four bar sequence of chords that repeats. It helps to create a repetitive hook in a song which makes it more memorable. The five chord is used in turnarounds to bring us back to the one chord. If we use a sus4 chord as a five chord, then we strengthen and reinforce this feeling of returning home to one. For example, If 
we take the previous turnaround but change the one chord to sus4, then we create an interesting sound. The suspended one chord prevents resolution and gives the turnaround an unsettled feeling. We can use this desire to resolve to create a song intro. Staying on 5 sus4 adds tension and expectancy for chord 1. Once we go into the verse, notice how a single beat on the 4 sus4 creates an interesting sound, breaking up the chord. Guitar players will often use these fleeting moves to the sus4 because they only involve moving one finger in certain chord shapes, and they spice up a song section. Sus4 chords are also useful in minor keys. Because of their suspended nature, they can resolve to major and minor chords. We can exploit this in minor keys where we will often use the major and minor versions of a chord in the same song. Let's look at an example in the key of A minor. Pay particular attention to bars 3 and 7. In our previous examples, we have always resolved the sus4 to its major or minor root chord before moving on. But you can, of course, just use the sus4 and carry on with your progression. This can add further tension or frustration. For example, A sus4 chord can be better integrated in a progression if the chord before it has a common tone, especially the suspended note itself. This can sometimes require the use of different chord types. In this example, in the key of C major, we will use the minor 7th chord as chord 2. This uses a C note, which is the 4th note in the following 5 sus4 chord. Also note how we move to the 6th chord after 5 rather than 1 to create an element of surprise and movement. In a major key, the 5 chord is often turned into a dominant 7th chord. Chord 5 can also be a dominant 7th and a sus4 at the same time. This is a chord with the notes 1, 4, 5, flat 7. This can open up more common tones to use as we did in the previous example. Here we look at a couple of examples. Note how the 5 7th sus4 chord resolves to the dominant 7th chord rather than the standard 5 chord. The 5 to 1 chord change which we have looked at is often called the perfect cadence. It creates the feeling of returning home. If we combine all the techniques we have discussed so far, it leads us to the most powerful, intense version of this perfect cadence. The 2 minus 7th shares two notes in common with the 5 dominant 7th sus4. This then resolves to the 5 dominant 7th and takes us back around to the 1 chord.
Let's now turn to the SUS2 chord. SUS2 can add colour and mystery to a sequence. You can experiment with this in your existing progressions. Start with sections that stay on a single chord and alternate between the root chord and SUS2. SUS2 can also add movement, even when we only use a few chords. Here is an example in the key of C major. In a minor key sequence, the sus2 can dilute the minor effect, or serve to withhold the minor chord 1. Compare bars 1 to 4 with 5 to 8 in this progression in the key of A minor. We can of course use sus4 and sus2 in the same song. This is often used in indie or jangle rock songs, where sus chords are rapidly linked together with the standard root chord. As we mentioned earlier, certain chord shapes make these moves very easy on guitar. Here is an example of this in action. Now I'll show you 6th chords. You just heard a C major 6th chord. Major 6th chords are normally written in notation with a number 6 next to the chord letter. You may also see them referred to as an added 6th chord or a triad with an added 6th. It is worth knowing that a 6th is sometimes referring to a 1st inversion chord with its 3rd in the bass and the root a 6th above it. This is how it's referred to in classical music today, also called a chord of the 6th. How do we construct the major 6th chord? To create a major 6th chord we take these three major chord notes and add the sixth note from the major scale. Let's clarify this with an example. The C major scale has the following notes. The sixth note in the scale is A. So in order to create our C major sixth chord we take the C major chord notes and add the sixth from the scale as a fourth note. This means that C major sixth has the notes C, E, G and A. Let's have a listen to C major and C major 6th played after one another to appreciate the difference. Major 6th chords have an ambiguous nature that can be hard to pin down. They can add a layer of complexity to your chord progressions by not pulling the listener as strongly as a 7th chord would. The mild tension and fragility they provide is not used as widely in popular music as the 7th chords are. You are more likely to find them in jazz, especially where the melody plays the chord's root note. Major 6th chords can also be awkward to play on the guitar. How can we use the major 6th chords? Despite not being as widely used as 7th chords, major 6th chords are actually quite versatile. Generally speaking, you can replace any major triad in your chord progressions with major sixth chords. For example, in a major slash Ionian key, chords 1, 4 and 5 can become major sixth chords without using notes from outside of the scale. In minor slash Aeolian, this would be chords 3, 6 and 7. Let's start with a simple progression using all major chords. Please note that all of our examples will be in the key of C major. Listen to how the progression changes when we swap in the major sixth chords. In our first progression we used an entirely major progression, but you can use major 6 within any sort of progression. It is worth noting how many major 6 chords are already in your progression or song, as repeatedly using them will weaken their impact and effectiveness. This is generally true of any chord that isn't a basic triad. Here is the very popular 1-5-6-4 progression with two major 6s. See how it colours the sound of the progression.
songwriters will often replace the seven diminished chord in a major key with a major triad in order to make their progressions less dissonant and tense. This is called a flat seven chord. This flat seven chord can also be turned into a major sixth chord. Here it is in the second half of the progression. Also see how we move from the standard one chord to the one major sixth. This is an easy way to create interest when a single chord is played for a while. We mentioned the ambiguity with major sixths earlier, so let's explore where that comes from. C major sixth has the notes C, E, G, and A. A minor seventh has the notes A, C, E, and G. You can see that these two chords have the same notes. This is always true of the one major sixth and the six minor seventh chords in a major key. If we played the first inversion of the six minor seventh, then it would be the same as a C major sixth. You may like this ambiguity, so don't dismiss it without experimenting. Trust your ear as to what sounds good or bad to you. Let's see an example of one major sixth and six minor seventh next to each other in a progression. What do you think of the sound it creates? You just heard a C minor sixth chord. Minor sixth chords are written in notation with a small m and the number six next to the chord letter. There is also another chord called the minor flat sixth. You just heard a C minor flat sixth chord. Minor flat sixth chords are written in notation the same as minor sixth chords, but we include the flat symbol next to the six. How do we construct the minor sixth chords? To create a minor sixth chord, we take these three minor chord notes and add the sixth note from the major scale. The minor flat sixth chord takes the minor chord notes again, but it adds the flat or minor sixth note to the chord. This note is half a step or a semitone below the sixth note. Let's clarify this with some examples. The C major scale has the following notes. The sixth note in the scale is A. So in order to create our C minor sixth chord, we take the C minor chord notes and add the sixth note from the scale as a fourth note. This means that the C minor sixth has the notes C, E flat, G and A. The flat sixth note is therefore A flat. So if we add this to the C minor chord, we get a C minor flat sixth with the notes C, E flat, G and A flat. Let's have a listen to C minor, C minor sixth and C minor flat sixth chords played after one another to appreciate the difference.
Minor sixth chords are tense and sad, with a bitterness compared to normal minor chords. They can act as an intensifier to the minor sound, creating an unsettling feel. The minor flat sixth chords are more repressed in their sadness. They are mildly dissonant due to the minor second interval between the fifth and the flat sixth notes. Both chords are not widely used in pop music and may be more associated with jazz. How can we use the minor sixth chords? In a major key, the standard minor sixth is used on the two chord and the minor flat sixth is used for chords three and six. Let's use the key of C major to explain why. We will also use this key for our later chord progressions. The two chord is D minor. D minor has the notes D, F and A. D minor sixth has the notes D, F, A and B. These notes are all in the C major scale, so this chord is perfectly in key. The three chord is E minor. E minor has the notes E, G and B. E minor sixth has the notes E, G, B and C sharp. The sixth note here is not in the C major scale, so we need to drop it by half a step or a semitone. This gives us the E minor flat sixth with the notes E, G, B and C. This is also true of the sixth chord. You can of course use both of these minor sixth chord types wherever you want. Experiment with them and see if you like the sound or not. Don't worry about being in key if you find the progressions that you like. We'll stick to using the chords strictly in key here so you can see how they sound that way. Let's start with a simple three chord progression using the two chord. We will swap in the minor sixth chord for the second half of the progression. This will provide you with a simple example of the minor sixth sound. Let's now use our minor flat sixth chords. First up will be a progression that uses the three chord, and after that will be a progression that uses the sixth chord. These simple and popular progressions will swap out a single chord for the minor flat sixth. Minor sixth chords are often used in isolation and not throughout a song to increase their impact. See what you think of their sound in these two examples. Minor sixth chords can be combined with other chord types to create interesting effects. One of these is by using the two minor sixth chord with the five dominant seventh chord. In the key of C major, the two minor sixth chord is D minor sixth with the notes D, F, A and B. The five dominant seventh chord is G dominant seventh with the notes G, B, D and F. You can see that they share three notes, so when placed next to each other they create a smooth and interesting sound. Here they are are in a progression, also note the use of a first inversion one chord.
We can take this shared note idea in another direction. If we take the sixth note in the two minor sixth chord and add it to some of the other chords in the progression by using different chord types, it can create an interesting sound. There are lots of ways you could do this. In this example, we use a one major seventh chord and a six sus two chord alongside the two minor sixth and the five chord. With the changes, they all have the seventh note from the scale in them. Listen to the shift in sound from standard triads to this alternative. A technique that songwriters will often use is to change the polarity of a chord in a key, so a major chord becomes a minor chord or vice versa. A popular chord to try this on in a major key is the IV chord. The IV chord in the key of C major is F major. We will change this to F minor. This could be considered a borrowed chord from the F minor slash Aeolian mode. You can change this chord to a standard minor sixth chord without any problems. Here it is in a simple progression. Listen out for the nice change that the minus six brings. We'll turn to a range of interesting add chords now. You just heard a C add 9 chord. The add 9 chords are written in notation with the chord letter, followed by lowercase a d d, and then the number 9. The chord you heard is a C minor add 9. The notation is the same as the add 9, but we include a small m after the letter name. How do we construct add 9 chords? Chords are created by using notes from a scale. The major and minor chords are created with three notes from the major scale. This is why you may hear them referred to as triads. If we take these triads and add a ninth note from the major scale, then we create an add nine chord. You may be thinking that there are only seven notes in the major scale. So where does this ninth note come from? Let's clarify this with an example. The C major scale has the following notes. C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. If we continue the scale after the seventh note B, then we simply repeat the notes again. This second set of notes is an octave higher than the first set of notes. So if we assign a number to each note, you can see that although the letter names repeat, the numbers continue to rise to indicate this higher pitch. That means that our ninth note is a D note, exactly the same as the second note, but it is an octave higher, so we add seven, and it becomes a ninth. Now that we understand the numbering system, let's construct some chords. As we discussed earlier, the ninth note is D. Therefore, to create add nine chords, we simply add this ninth note to one of the triads. So C add nine has the notes C, E, G, and D. And C minor add nine has the notes C, E flat, G, and D. It is important to know that these are not major ninth, dominant ninth, or minor ninth chords. Add nines are missing the seventh or flat seventh note that those ninth chords have. This is the only difference, but it does impact the sound of the chord. Let's have a listen to C major, C add nine, C minor, and C minor add nine played after one another to appreciate the difference. Add 9 chords can add a feeling of strength to a chord sequence, introducing an interesting colour to the major sound. Minor add 9s can act as an intensifier because they make the minor chord feel even more tragic and sad. 
Add 9 chords are more popular on the guitar than their standard 9th cousins because they are easier to play. Their sound is also better suited to distorted guitars than the full 9th chords. How can we use the add 9 chords? You can turn any major or minor triad into an add 9. Generally, add 9 chords will feature as any chord in a major key except for chord 3. In a minor key, this would be chord 5. This is because these chords introduce a note from outside of the key, which can create unwanted dissonance or conflict. This does not mean that you should not use these chords. The best approach is to experiment with them in your song or chord progression and see what you think. As always in songwriting, trust your ear as to what sounds good or bad. Your opinion is the one that counts. Let's start by using a basic 1 to 4 chord change in C major and alternating standard triads with add 9 chords. If you want to transform your songwriting, then use the ultimate musical sketch pad, hook pad. We use hook pad to show you chord progressions and melodies in our videos because it is easy to use and intuitive. Click the link in the description below and see what hook pad can do for your music. We can also make all of the chords add nines. Here is a descending progression using all major chords. Here we take a more classic progression and make all the minor and major triads add nines. Add nine chords are often used in progressions that are linked by common tones. For guitar players, this makes their lives easier by keeping the note in question held throughout. This can involve the use of a variety of chord types to maintain the common tone. In this example, we will complement the flat 7 add 9 with sus 2 and minor 7th chords. The common note here is the 9th in B flat add 9, which is C. Here is a progression linked by the G note. And here is one linked by the D note. Note the use of the G dominant 7th here. Let's explore the intense sad feeling of the minor add 9 chord by looking at a couple of examples in the key of A minor. You just heard a C major add 11 chord. Add 11 chords are written in notation with the word add and number 11 after the chord letter. You also get minor add 11 chords, which use the same principle. For example, C minor add 11 is written like this. Now you might be asking, how do I construct add 11 chords? You simply take an existing major or minor triad and add an 11th note. So major add 11 chords have the notes 1st, 3rd, 5th and 11th 
And minor add 11th chords have the notes 1st, flat or minor 3rd, 5th and 11th. These numbers show the notes that make up the add 11 chords. They are also referring to the intervals that are within the chord. It is like a formula or recipe that you can apply to generate add 11 chords. Let's look at an example to clarify this. The C major scale has the following notes. You may be wondering how you get to the 11th note if the major scale only has 7 notes. If I continue the scale after the 7th note B, then the notes simply repeat again. This second set of notes is an octave higher than the first set of notes. So if I assign a number to each note, you can see that although the letters repeat, the numbers continue to rise to indicate this higher pitch. The 11th note is F. This is the same as the 4th note, but it is an octave higher, so you add 7 and it becomes 11th. If you add this 11th note F to the C major triad, then you get a C major add 11 with the notes C, E, G and F. C minor add 11th would therefore have the notes C, E flat, G and F. The major add 11 chord has a tenth sound and they are not widely found in songwriting. The semitone distance between the third note and the fourth really builds this tension. Remember that the fourth and eleventh notes are the same note. It is less cluttered than the full major eleventh chord because it lacks a seventh and ninth note, so it is a bit easier to play on guitar. This makes it a little more useful for adding a bit of tension or spice to your progressions. Minor add 11th chords are a little more versatile than their major add 11 chord cousins. They don't sound so dissonant and can be used more widely. This is because there is now a wider distance between the flat or minor third note and the fourth slash 11th compared to the major add 11 chord. I recommend experimenting with them anywhere you find a minor chord, regardless of the key. Through this experimentation you will appreciate the sound of the minor add 11th chord and see how it fits into your songs with the instruments that you use. If you are using them diatonically, which means strictly in a key, then add 11th chords can feature as any of the 7 chords in a major key, with the exception of the 4 chord. In minor slash aeolian keys this would be every chord except the 6 chord. I'll show you some examples now using Hookpad. There are links in the description if you want to get Hookpad and follow along or to learn more. I'll use the key of C major for the examples, but these principles apply to any major key. First up I'll show you the major add 11. The basic principles behind its use are similar to the standard major 11th chord. The simplest way to introduce this chord is to briefly play it as the one chord after hearing the standard version. This limits the tension that the chord brings and can be achieved rhythmically by introducing the 11th note briefly. Here's an example in a basic chord progression. It can also be nice to use the 1 add 11 with the 5 add 11 as their tension complements each other. Listen to how this sounds here. Moving from 1 add 11 to 6 provides a pleasing sound. This is because 6 is the relative minor of 1 and therefore provides a satisfying resolution to the tense add 11. For example. As has been said, the add 11 is a single note added to the standard triad. This is also true of the add 9 chord. In this next example I will cycle through the major slash dominant 7th, add 9 and add 11 versions of the 1 and 5 chords. Using this rhythmic idea of adding and removing a note is used a lot by guitar players because it is often a case of moving a single finger. Listen to an example of this idea now.
I'll now introduce the minor add 11 chords. As I mentioned earlier, these minor add 11 chords can be used as any of the minor chords in a major key. As such, it can be tempting to use them all in your progressions, but it is worth holding fire a little and only introduce them for some variety on a repeated section or to emphasize some drama and add a bit of sophistication in the song. In this first example, I'll use the minor two add 11 chord. In the first four bars, I just play standard triads. For contrast, the second four bars introduce the add 11 chord and also a first inversion one chord. Listen to the change this provides, lifting the progression up in a rising crescendo. Next up I'll use the 6 add 11 chord. I'll take the popular 1, 6, 5, 4 chord progression and on repeat change the 6 to add 11. Listen to the difference this brings. You can use more than one add 11 in a progression, but it is nice to separate them out a bit to allow them to breathe. Also note in this next example how you hear the standard version and the add 11 chord. This feeling of something being the same but different is a great songwriting technique. It's also a progression that doesn't start on the one chord, again providing a different approach. As I discussed earlier, the 11th note is actually the same as the 4th note. This 4th note also features in sus4 chords. You can exploit this fact to provide an interesting preview of the 11th note that will feature in your add 11 chords. It is also another idea for recycling later repeats of your progression. Getting more mileage out of a single chord progression gives you more flexibility as a songwriter and can help you prevent writer's block and finish more of your songs. In this example, the first 4 bars introduce a basic 1, 3, 4, 5 progression. On the second repeat I bring in sus4 and add 11 chords. The one chord is split in two with the standard triad and the sus4. This is a common move to make a song feel less static, favoured particularly by guitar players. Listen to the smooth feel of the sus4 chord. In the next bar I play the 3 add 11 chord, mainly because we haven't heard it yet in this video. Next up is the standard 4 chord. As mentioned earlier, it's nice to keep some standard triads as a breather between altered chords. Also, the 4 chord doesn't stay in key as a sus4 or add 11 chord, so I feel like it's a good one to keep in the progression. We then end on the 5 chord, using the preview idea I discussed of playing the sus4 before the add 11. Listen to the pleasing end to the progression that this provides. Ninth chords are our next group to consider. You just heard the C major ninth chord. Major ninth chords are written in notation with M, A, J and the number 9. There are several types of ninth chords that you may have heard of. This can cause confusion, but just know that the major ninth is only one of these chords. 
How do we construct major ninth chords? A major ninth chord uses the major seventh chord notes and adds a ninth note from the major scale. As we discussed earlier, the ninth note is D. Therefore, to create a C major ninth chord, we take the C major seventh chord notes and add the ninth note, which gives us C, E, G, B, and D. Let's have a listen to C major, C major seventh, and C major ninth played after one another to appreciate the difference. Major ninth chords can be considered much like their major seventh cousins, if not a little smoother. They can also be thought of as less lush than the major seventh chord. The major ninth chord can sometimes sound too full or busy on certain instruments because you are playing five notes at the same time. It can also be difficult to play on the guitar. How can we use the major ninth chord? We can use the major ninth chords much like we use the major seventh chords because they contain the notes from this chord. They are primarily used on chords one and four in a major key. We can chain together major ninth chords and repeat them to fade. This is often used in ballads. Please note that the examples will be given in the key of C major. Another simple way to use the major ninth chord is to go from the standard major to the major ninth. This gives a feeling of four different chords. We can also experiment with mixing and matching major sevenths and major ninths in a similar fashion. These ideas can create riff-like chord changes where a single note is added or removed for a beat to create an interesting sound. Each of the three major chords in a major key have a special relationship with one of the three minor chords in the key. These are called relative minors. For the one chord, its relative minor is six, and the four chord has the relative minor of two. The major seventh chord can be a useful transition from the major chord to its relative minor. We can use this same technique with the major ninth chords. For example, Depending on the style of music that you are creating, it is often a good idea to not overuse the extended chords, such as major ninths. If you save them for a key moment in your song, or chord progression, then they will have a bigger impact. As always, trust your ear and use the major ninth where it sounds good to you. You just heard a C minor ninth chord. The minor ninth chords are shown in notation with the chord letter followed by a small m and the number 9. How do we construct a minor ninth chord? A minor ninth chord uses the minor seventh chord notes and adds a ninth note from the major scale. Let's clarify this with an example. The C major scale has the following notes. As we discussed earlier, the ninth note is D. Therefore, to create a C minor ninth chord, we take the C minor seventh chord notes and add the ninth note, which gives us C, E flat, G, B flat, and D. Let's have a listen to C minor, C minor seventh, and C minor ninth played after one another to appreciate the difference.
The minor ninth has a similar sound to the minor seventh. It could be described as intensifying the minor sound. It is often heard in soul, folk, and some rock as a substitute for the minor seventh. This is usually, but not exclusively, in ballads. Because it has five notes, it could be considered as cluttered or busy, depending on the instrument that it is played on. How can we use the minor ninth chords? Generally speaking, you can use the minor ninth as a simple replacement for the minor seventh chords in a progression. In a major key, this has no problems on chords two and six, and in a minor key, it would be chords one and four, where issues arise is on chord five in a minor key. Using a minor ninth here will introduce a note from out of the key, which can create unwanted conflicts and dissonance. This does not mean that you should not use these chords. The best approach is to experiment with it in your song or chord progression and see what you think. As always in songwriting, trust your ear as to what sounds good or bad. Your opinion is the one that counts. Let's start by using chords 2 minor ninth and 6 minor ninth in a turnaround. Please note that examples will be in the key of C major. Minor ninth chords can be used to contrast song sections. The interesting, more intense feel of the minor ninth will make a section stand out. Here is an example of a verse contrasted against a chorus. Because they only differ by one note, you can alternate between minor 7th chords and minor 9th chords to create an interesting sound. Minor ninths can also be paired with major ninths to create quite an intense, mournful sound. The sus2 chords take away the third note in a chord and replace it with a second note. If you remember from earlier, this second note is actually the same as a ninth note. Because of this, the sus2 can be a nice link chord to the minor ninth. For example, You just heard a C dominant ninth chord. Dominant ninth chords are written in notation with a 9 next to the letter. There is no dom or d. How do we construct a dominant ninth chord? A dominant ninth uses the dominant seventh chord notes and adds a ninth note from the major scale. As we discussed earlier, the ninth note is d. Therefore, to create a C dominant ninth chord, we take the C dominant seventh chord notes and add the ninth note, which gives us C, E, G, B flat, and D. Let's have a listen to C major, C dominant 7th and C dominant 9th played after one another to appreciate the difference. The dominant 9th could be considered less stark than the dominant 7th. Where the dominant 7th feels particularly bluesy, the dominant 9th can feel more mellow or relaxed. Dominant ninth chords are used heavily in blues, jazz, and sometimes even in rock music. They also have an association with funk. How can we use the dominant ninth chords? The traditional use of the dominant chords is as the five chord in major keys. However, because of its use in the blues, jazz, and funk, 
You may have heard it used as chords 1 and 4 as well. If you have seen or used dominant 7th chords in chord progressions, then you can simply replace them with the dominant 9th chords with no issues at all. Let's start with the main use of the dominant chords, which is as the 5 chord. The dominant 9th has an extremely strong desire to resolve, so it is useful at the end of a turnaround where we are going back to the 1 chord. Please note that our examples will be in the key of C major. You can also use the dominant 7th alongside the dominant 9th chords. If we use our previous example, we can see this idea in action. A classic way to use dominant chords is with the 12 bar blues. In this example, we will use the dominant ninth chords as 1, 4 and 5. The influence of the blues on popular music means that you may have heard these chords in progressions more widely. The 5 dominant ninth chord shares all of the notes with the 2 chord. This means that 2 can be a good lead into the dominant 9 5 chord. For example, We can also use the major ninth with the dominant ninth. Here we alternate chord types on the one chord. This creates a sense of movement before moving to the four chord. You can also return to the major ninth rather than the four chord. You can experiment beyond one, four and five dominant ninths if you would like. The key to songwriting is experimenting and using ideas that sound good to you. Trust your ear. For example, you could change the 2 chord to a dominant ninth to create an interesting sound. Moving up in density, now it's 11th chords. You just heard a C major 11th chord. Major 11th chords are written in notation with the letters M, A, J and the number 11 next to them. How do I construct the major 11th chords? The C major scale has the following notes. C, D, E, F, G, A and B. If we continue the scale after the 7th note B, then we simply repeat the notes again. This second set of notes is an octave higher than the first set of notes. So if we assign a number to each note, you can see that although the letter names repeat, the numbers continue to rise to indicate this higher pitch. That means that our ninth note is a D note, exactly the same as the second note, but it is an octave higher, so we add 7 and it becomes a ninth. Major 11th chords use the major 9th chord notes and add the 11th note from the major scale. This note is the same as the 4th note, but it is an octave higher, so as before we add 7 and it becomes an 11th. In our C major example, the 11th note is F. Finally, to construct a C major 11th chord, you add the 11th note F to the C major 9th chord. This gives you the following notes. C, E, G, B, D and F. 
Let's have a listen to C major, C major 7th, C major 9th and C major 11th played after one another to appreciate the difference. You can hear that C major 11th is a dense and dissonant chord. It has six of the seven notes from the major scale, which goes a long way to explain this. Look at the notes in the C major 11th chord. The first three notes, C, E and G, create the C major triad. This is the one chord or the tonic in the key of C major. If you take the last four notes in the C major 11th chord, G, B, D and F, you have a G dominant 7th chord. This is the 5 or dominant chord in the key of C major. In major key chord progressions you typically play the 5 dominant 7th chord to create tension and then resolve this by playing the 1 tonic chord afterwards. But the major 11th contains the notes of both of these chords within it. This makes it harmonically confusing and unsettled. For this reason and because it is difficult to play on the guitar you will rarely see the major 11th used in chord progressions. I think this is an opportunity or challenge for your songwriting. If a chord is not heard very often, then it could be the missing ingredient to make your chord progression sound unique and interesting. It is more common to see the major 11th altered by removing certain notes to create a clearer and less cluttered sound. But this video is focused purely on the full major 11th chord, so I will now show you how to use them in your chord progressions. If you are playing in a major key then the only chord you can turn into a major 11th is the one tonic chord. This is because the other chords will introduce notes from outside of the relevant major scale. As you would expect, only being able to use the major 11th on the one chord does limit its usefulness. But there are still some applications for the chord. Also I recommend that you experiment with major 11 chords in any place that you like. You might just find a way to accommodate them that makes your song really great. Let's look at our first example. To ease the listener into the dissonant major 11th chord sound, I recommend playing it after the standard 1 chord. Here's an example using the 1, 4 and 5 chords. Please note that all examples will be in the key of C major. Moving from the 1 major 11th to the 6 chord works well. This is because the 6 chord is the relative minor of 1 and contains the single note from the major scale that the major 11 1 chord does not have. In this case it is A. Listen to the nice sound this provides. If you want to reduce the conflicting sound of the major 11th chord, you can use it for a brief moment in your chord progression. Here's an example where you only hear the one major 11th for a beat in bar 1. See how it doesn't have enough time to provide confusion and tension. You can also mix the major 11th chord with other chord types to generate interesting progressions. In this next example we'll cycle through the major chord types. As I discussed when constructing the major 11th chord at the beginning of this video, you can think of it as being built upon the major 7th and major 9th chords. So let's use them all in the one progression. Listen to how this process of adding or removing a single note to a chord sounds. Next up we'll pair the major 11th with the dominant 7th chord. In order to accommodate this we'll use the secondary dominant of the 4 chord. If you want to learn more about secondary dominance we have a video in the description. Then we move to the 4 chord and finish with the 5 dominant 7th chord. Remember how this chord's notes were in the major 11th 1 chord. You 
You just heard an A minor 11th chord. Minor 11th chords are written in notation with a small m and the number 11. When used with Roman numerals, you will see the number 11 next to the lowercase Roman numeral. Now you might be wondering, how do I construct the minor 11th chords? Minor 11th chords have six notes. First, minor third, fifth, minor seventh, ninth, and 11th. These numbers show the notes that make up the minor 11th chord. They are also referring to the intervals that are within the minor 11th chord. It is like a formula or recipe that you can apply to generate minor 11th chords. You can think about these numbers from several perspectives. I will use the natural minor scale or aeolian mode as the point of reference in this video. Let's look at an example. The A natural minor scale has the following notes. A, B, C, D, E, F and G. The first note is A, the minor third is C, and the fifth is E. These three notes make up the A minor triad. If you add the minor seventh note G, then you have an A minor seventh chord. You may be wondering how you get to the ninth and eleventh notes if the natural minor scale only has seven notes. If I continue to scale after the seventh note G, then the notes simply repeat again. This second set of notes is an octave higher than the first set of notes. So if I assign a number to each note, you can see that although the letters repeat, the numbers continue to rise to indicate this higher pitch. I can now pick up where I left off with the A minor seventh chord. The ninth note is B. You will see that this is the same as the second note, but it is an octave higher, so we add seven and it becomes nine. If you add the ninth note B to the A minor seventh chord, then you have an A minor ninth chord. The eleventh note is D. This is the same as the fourth note. If you add this to the A minor ninth chord, then you get the A minor eleventh chord. I appreciate this has been a bit long-winded, but now you can construct any minor eleventh chord that you like. You also understand that the minor eleventh chord contains six notes from the natural minor scale that are also in the minor, minor seventh and minor ninth chords. This goes a long way to explaining the dense nature of the minor eleventh chord. They are used a lot more in jazz than popular music. I think this is an opportunity or challenge for your songwriting. If a chord is not heard very often, then it could be the missing ingredient to make your chord progression sound unique and interesting. It is common to see the minor eleventh altered by removing certain notes to create a clearer and less cluttered sound and to make them easier to play on guitar. But this video is focused purely on the full minor 11th chord, so now I'll show you how to use them in chord progressions. Minor 11th chords are a little more versatile than their major 11th chord cousins. They don't sound so dissonant and can be used more widely. I recommend experimenting with them anywhere you find a minor chord, regardless of the key. Through this experimentation, you will appreciate the sound of the minor 11th chord and see how it fits into your songs with the instruments that you use. If you are using them diatonically, the minor 11th chords will feature as chords 2 and 6 in major keys and chords 1 and 4 in natural minor or aeolian keys. Diatonic chords use only notes from a particular scale and are strictly in a key. I'll show you some examples now using Hookpad. There are links in the description if you want to get Hookpad and follow along or to learn more. Let's start in the key of C major. The 2 chord is D minor and the 6 chord is A minor. I'll use these as minor 11th chords in a few progressions to demonstrate the chord's potential. In this first example, the minor 11th 2 chord is played after the 1 chord and followed by a first inversion 1 chord. This creates a rising bass line, C, D, E and F. Listen to how the minor 11th adds a depth and complexity, almost acting like a preview of the inverted chord to come. If you rearrange these chords and start with the minor 11th 2 chord, you get a very different feel. Using only inverted 1 chords also adds to the progression's movement.
Let's look at a couple of minor 11 6 chord examples now. In major keys, a common chord progression is 1 6 5 4. It has a nice descending feel to it. If you use a minor 11th chord for the 6 chord, then it adds a layer of sophistication or complexity that makes this familiar progression stand out more. With extended and altered chords, it is often nice to contrast it with the standard triad. This can make for an interesting sound and is also a practical way to get more mileage out of later repeats of the chord progression. Let's tweak the previous example to see this in action. The first three bars are exactly the same. The difference this time is we return to the standard triad to provide a different ending. You can also use more than one minor 11th in the same progression. I would recommend that you have some separation between minor 11th chords, as they can become a bit of a dense mess otherwise. In this example, we use the 5 chord as a major buffer between minor 11th chords before moving to the tonic 1 chord. Listen to how comparing the minor 11th chords provides a pleasing sound. When using these examples, you will likely be building larger chord progressions and song sections. I want to try and help you to have a go at this yourself, so we'll run through an example now. I'll start with the minor 11th 2 chord, and then use the second progression you saw earlier. This will be repeated twice, but on the second version I'll swap in the 5 chord. This will naturally lead to the 1 chord, which a chorus will often start with. So I'll start the next section with a 1 chord. This is actually the first time you hear the standard one tonic chord. The simple 1-6-5-4 progression you heard earlier will serve nicely as a chorus section. Finally, I'll use the last example you saw to step us down to the one chord to end on. As you saw earlier, minor 11th chords can be used as the 1 and 4 chords in minor keys. So let's look at some minor key examples. I'll use the key of A minor or A Aeolian. First up, I'll take a common 1 6 4 3 progression and change it on repeat to add some interest. In this version, I'll make the 4 chord into a minor 11th and the 3 into a major 9th. Listen to how this changes the feel of the second half of this progression, providing a step up at the end.
In the next progression, I'll introduce the one minor 11th chord. The first four bars will be a simple one, four, five, four. In the last four bars, the first four will become a minor 11th, and the final bar will be replaced with the one chord minor 11th. Coming back to the one minor 11th provides a sad link back to the standard triad on repeat. Starting with the minor 11th chord provides an unsettling effect. In the next example, I'll use this alongside the first inversion 5 chord. Note how the minor 5 is used this time, rather than the major 5. You can mix different chord types throughout a progression to mask the true sound of the chords involved. In the next example, I will start with the minor 11th again, but this time all of the other chords will be minor and dominant 7th chords. Listen to how this provides a smoother, jazzier feel to the progression. You just heard a C dominant 11th chord. Dominant 11th chords are written in notation with the number 11 after the chord letter. You may also see them referred to as simply 11th chords. Now you might be wondering, how do I construct the dominant 11th chords? Dominant 11th chords have six notes. First, third, fifth, flat or minor seventh, ninth and 11th. These numbers show the notes that make up the dominant 11th chord. They are also referring to the intervals that are within the dominant 11th chord. It is like a formula or recipe that you can apply to generate dominant 11th chords. The 11th note is F. This is the same as the 4th note. If you add this to the C dominant 9th chord, then you get the C dominant 11th chord. Dominant chords feature as the 5 chord in major and minor key songs. They create a tension and expectancy that is resolved when the next chord is the tonic 1 chord. This is because the notes in a dominant chord are close enough to the 1 chord notes that they really pull the listener's ear towards the tonic chord. Dominant 7th chords also contain a tritone interval within them which has an unstable sound that wants to resolve. If you use the dominant 11th chord diatonically as the 5 chord, then its 11th note will be the root note of the 1 tonic chord. This weakens the tension somewhat within the chord and almost anticipates the resolution that will happen when the 1 chord is played. This mellower nature brings a new dimension to the dominant chord, so experiment with dominant 11ths in your own progressions and see what you think. I'll show you some examples now using hook pad. There are links in the description if you want to get hook pad and follow along or to learn more. Examples will be in the key of C major. In this example, I'll use the dominant 11th chord in the most traditional position as the 5 chord at the end of a progression after the 4 chord and before the 1 chord plays again on repeat. Please note that the dominant 11th chord is written as a slash chord in hook pad. In the first 4 bars, I'll use the standard 5 chord triad. In the second 4 bars, the final chord will be the dominant 11th. Listen to the difference that this brings.
Next up I'll show you the 5 dominant 11th on its own at the end of a progression. Listen to how playing a chord other than 4 before the 5 chord provides less of a build up and more surprise when the dominant chord is heard. When creating longer song sections you can simply combine ideas. In the next progression I'll take the first two examples and put them together. On the second repeat I'll use the dominant 11th again and also change the minor chords to minor 11ths. Listen to how combining 11th chord types adds a relaxed mood to the progression. Repeating song sections in your own songwriting can be made more interesting by altering chord types in a similar way. You don't have to make every 5 chord a dominant 11th, I've shown you the comparison with standard triads, you can also use dominant 7th and dominant 9th chords as the 5 chord. In this next example I'll use two different dominant chords on the same bar for comparison, but you could spread them throughout your song as well. As I showed you earlier, the 11th note in the major scale is the same as the 4th note. Sus4 chords use this 4th note. If you play the 5 chord as a sus4, it can provide an interesting lead in to the 5 dominant 11th, providing a preview of the 11th slash 4th note. In this next example I will also use the 1st inversion 1 chord and start on the 4 chord for an alternative type of progression. Another interesting place to use dominant 11th chords is as secondary dominance. A secondary dominant chord has a dominant relationship to a chord that isn't the tonic or one chord of the current key. Check out our video to learn more about this. I'll show you this in action now. In the first four bars you'll hear the standard triads. I've used the secondary dominant of the 5 chord, known as the 5 of 5, to lead the listener to the 5 chord. Listen to how this draws the ear to the 5 chord. In the second half I use dominant 11th chords on both the secondary dominant and the dominant chord. Hear how this changes the progression.
In this next example, I will use the secondary dominant of the 6 chord. This will be the only dominant chord this time. Listen to how not using a standard 5 chord changes the feel of the progression. Even denser still are 13th chords. You just heard a C major 13th chord. Major 13th chords are written in notation with the letters M, A, J and the number 13 after the chord letter. The next chord that we'll play is the C minor 13th chord. Minor 13th chords are written in notation with a small m and the number 13 after the chord letter. Finally, let's listen to the C dominant 13th chord also known simply as the 13 chord. This chord is written with the number 13 after the letter name. Now you might be asking, how do I construct these 13th chords? Major 13th chords are built off of the major scale and include the following scale degrees. Root, 3rd, 5th, 7th, 9th, 11th and 13th. Minor 13th chords include the following scale degrees. Root, flat or minor 3rd, 5th, flat or minor 7th, 9th, 11th, 13th. And dominant 13th chords include the following scale degrees. Root, 3rd, 5th, flat 7th, 9th, 11th and 13th. Let's look at some examples to clarify this. The C major scale has the following notes. C, D, E, F, G, A and B. The first note is C, third note is E, and fifth note is G. These notes create a C major chord. Add the seventh note B to this and you get a C major seventh chord. If I continue the scale after the seventh note B, then the notes simply repeat again. This second set of notes is an octave higher than the first set of notes. So if I assign a number to each note, you can see that although the letters repeat, the numbers continue to rise to indicate this higher pitch. The ninth note D is the same as the second note. Add this to the C major 7th chord and you get a C major 9th chord. 11th note F is the same as the 4th note. Add this to the C major 9th chord and you get a C major 11th chord. And finally, the 13th note A is the same as the 6th note. Add this to the C major 11th chord and you get a C major 13th chord. So to confirm, the C major 13th chord has 7 notes. C, E, G, B, D, F and A. This is not a mistake, it is every note in the C major scale. Despite its dense nature, this chord has a bright, happy sound due to the major 3rd and the major 7th scale degrees. Let's now explore the C minor 13th chord. Here's the C major scale again. You use the same process I demonstrated earlier to build the chords. So start on the root note, skip a note to the 3rd note and then skip another note to the 5th note. The difference with minor chords is the 3rd note. It becomes a flat or minor 3rd. This is indicated with the flat symbol. A flat note is half a step or semitone below the standard note. Therefore, in this example, C minor would have the notes C, E flat and G. If you add the flat 7th note B flat to the C minor triad, then you get a C minor 7th chord with the notes C, E flat, G and B flat. I'll show you how the C minor 13th chord is constructed. This process is similar to what you've learnt about the major 13th chord, so I won't go into detail about the 9th and 11th chords here. This ultimately gives you a C minor 13th chord with the notes C, E flat, G, B flat, D, F and A. This chord has a more sombre, melancholy sound due to the minor 3rd and the minor 7th scale degrees. Finally, it's the C13 chord. 
If you take the C major 13th chord, but use the flat 7th note we saw in the minor 13th chord, you get the notes C, E, G, B flat, D, F and A. This chord has a tense dissonant sound due to the flat 7th scale degree combined with the 3rd scale degree. You can experiment with substituting 13th chords anywhere in your own chord progressions to add some extra complexity and interest to your music. When used diatonically, that is strictly in a key, then the major 13th chord can feature as the 1 chord, the minor 13th can be the 2 chord, and the dominant 13th can be used as the 5 chord in major keys. In natural minor slash aeolian keys, the major 13th chord can be used as the 3 chord, the minor 13th can feature as the 4 chord, and the dominant 13th as the 7 chord. Because they have 7 notes, all of these full 13th chords are impractical to play on most instruments. Because of this and their dense lack of clarity, these chords are rarely used in practice. What you will come across is versions of these chords with one or more of the notes removed. This is in order to make them easier to play and to provide a clearer sound. I won't go into detail about these altered chords in this video, the focus here are the full 7 note 13th chords. I'll show you some examples now using Hookpad. There are links in the description if you want to get Hookpad and follow along or to learn more. I'll use the key of C major for the examples, but these principles apply to any major key. Here are the chords in the key of C major. You know that the 1 chord can be played as a major 13th, the 2 can be a minor 13th, and the 5 can be a dominant 13th. This gives us C major 13th with the notes C, E, G, B, D, F and A, D minor 13th which has the notes D, F, A, C, E, G and B, and G 13 which is constructed with the notes G, B, D, F, A, C and E. You can see that these chords all have the same notes, which are the 7 notes in the C major scale. You might therefore expect them all to sound the same, but have a listen to them in order now. The different root notes and order of the notes stacked above this differentiate the chords from one another. So now you might be asking, how can I use the 13th chords? Basically they function in the same way as the simpler chords that you've substituted for them. Let's use a popular 1-4-2-5 progression to explore this. In this first version I'll use the major 13th chord for the 1 chord. Listen to the change this brings to the home chord. Next up, the minor 13th chord will feature as the 2 chord. Listen to how complex and out of place this sounds here without any other altered or extended chords around it. Finally, it's time for the dominant 13th chord in the 5 position. Here it will lead us back to the tonic chord 1. Listen to the tense dissonance that makes the resolution to the 1 chord all the more satisfying. This idea is sometimes used in gospel music. Another way to use dominant 13th chords is as secondary dominance. Check out my video on secondary dominance in the description for more information. If I use the secondary dominant of the 4 chord, it is the same as the 1 chord. 
If you play this chord as a dominant 7th chord, it provides a strong pull to the 4 chord in order to be resolved. This secondary dominant of the 4 chord also works well when played as a dominant 13th. Listen to this in the following progression. So far the 13th chords have been a bit isolated, but in the next progression I'll use the three 13th chord types that you have learnt. Listen to how this changes the feel of the entire progression. It also starts on the chord that isn't the 1 chord. This gives the progression a different movement to when we started on the 1 chord. <laughs> Now to look at some 7th chord variations. You just heard a C dominant 7th flat 5 chord. These chords are written in notation with the number 7, the flat symbol and the number 5 after the chord letter. Now you might be asking, how do I construct these 7 flat 5 chords? You simply take an existing dominant 7th chord and flatten the 5th note by dropping it half a step or semitone. This means that they have the notes 1st, 3rd, flat or diminished 5th and flat or minor 7th. These numbers show the notes that make up the 7 flat 5 chords. They are also referring to the intervals that are within the chord. It is like a formula or recipe that you can apply to generate 7 flat 5 chords. Let's look at an example to clarify this. The C major scale has the following notes. C, D, E, F, G, A and B. The first note is C, third note is E and fifth note is G. These notes create a C major chord. The seventh note is B. If you flatten this note, dropping it a half step or semitone, then you get the note B flat. Add this to the C major chord and you have a C dominant seventh chord. If you flatten the 5th note G by dropping it half a step or a semitone, then you have a G flat note. Use this in the previous chord and you have a C7 flat 5 chord with the notes C, E, G flat and B flat. The 7 flat 5 chord has a dissonant, mysterious and unresolved sound that is found widely in jazz music. Because of this dissonance, you will often find them used as passing chords, providing brief touches of tension. The 7 flat 5 is an interesting chord. It is enharmonically equivalent to its own second inversion. That is to say, it has the same notes, but with different names. This means it has the same notes as the 7 flat 5 chord that is three tones or steps, or six semitones or half steps away. Let's take the C7 flat 5 I showed you earlier to explore this idea. It has the notes C, E, G flat and B flat. The second inversion of this therefore has the notes G flat, B flat, C and E. If you want to learn more about inverted chords, then check out my videos in the description. This should be the same as the 7 flat 5 chord a tritone away. To find this, I'll start at C and count up 6 notes. This gets you to F sharp. The F sharp 7 flat 5 chord has the notes F sharp, A sharp, C and E. If you are familiar with accidental notes, you will know that F sharp is equivalent to G flat and A sharp to B flat, which as expected is the same as the second inversion C7 flat 5. This means that in reality there are only 6 unique 7 flat 5 chords. 7 flat 5 chords do not feature diatonically in major keys. This is because they introduce a note, the flat 5, from outside of the scale. This goes some way to explaining their tension and dissonance. I'll show you some examples now using hook pad. 
There are links in the description if you want to get Hookpad and follow along or to learn more. The easiest and most common way to use 7 flat 5 chords is just to substitute any dominant 7th chord you play with the 7 flat 5. I'll start in the key of C major. Dominant 7th chords normally feature as the 5 chord in order to resolve to the 1 chord. This is known as a perfect cadence. I'll present a few of these in a progression now. Then on repeat they'll be substituted with the 7 flat 5 chords. Listen to the difference the 7 flat 5 brings and how dissonant it sounds. Seven flat five chords are often used in jazz standards, giving a distinct sound flavor. A really common chord progression in jazz is the two five one, where each chord is played as a seventh chord. As in the previous example, all I will do is substitute the five dominant seventh chord with the seven flat five. Listen to the distinctive edge this brings the progression. Seven flat five chords are also used in the tritone substitution. This is where the five chord is replaced by a dominant seventh chord whose root is a tritone below. You know from earlier in the video that a tritone is six half steps. In our previous progression, the five chord was G major. Six half steps below G is D flat. So in this case, I would substitute the G dominant seventh chord for a D flat dominant seventh. This chord is also called a flat second. Another way to find it is to take the root note of the minor 2 chord, drop it by half a step, and then create a dominant 7th chord from this new root note. In this case, the 2 chord is D minor, so we drop this note by half a step to D flat. This once again gets us to a D flat dominant 7th chord. This tritone substitution can be played as a 7 flat 5 chord to add another layer of complexity and tension. Also note how this progression now has a bass line descending by half steps from D to D flat to C. This kind of downward trajectory produces a pull towards the tonic chord which can really help to reinforce the key. You also see minor ninth chords used in these sorts of progressions. Listen to this all in action now. I've shown you major keys, now let's look at minor slash aeolian keys. 7 flat 5 chords are probably found more in minor keys. There's a good reason for this, let's explore it now. 
Here are the chords in the key of C minor. A common thing to do is to play the minor 5 chord as a major 5 chord. In this case you would play G major. You then use this as a dominant 7th chord to resolve back to the minor 1 chord. Listen to the difference between them in the following examples. This is the same 5 chord as you saw in the major key. As such, you can also turn it into a 7 flat 5 chord. 7 flat 5 chords sound less dissonant and have a more satisfying resolution in minor keys when used as the 5 chord to resolve to the minor 1 chord. This is due to the movement of notes involved between each of the chords, creating a resolution to the tritone found within the 7 flat 5 chord. Listen to how less dissonant compared to the major key this cadence sounds in the following example. You just heard a C major 7th add 11 chord. Major 7th add 11th chords are written in notation with the letters MAJ and the number 7 after the chord letter. Then you have the word add and the number 11. Sometimes the add 11 is in brackets. You also get minor 7th add 11 chords, which use the same principle. For example, C minor 7th add 11 is written like this. And dominant 7th add 11 chords are written like this. Now you might be asking, how do I construct these 7 add 11 chords? You simply take an existing 7th chord and add an 11th note. So major 7th add 11 chords have the notes 1st, 3rd, 5th, 7th and 11th. Minor 7th add 11 chords have the notes 1st, flat or minor 3rd, 5th, flat or minor 7th and 11th. And dominant 7th add 11 chords have the notes 1st, 3rd, 5th, flat or minor 7th, and 11th. Another way to think of these chords is as full 11th chords with the 9th note removed. These numbers show the notes that make up the 7 add 11 chords. They are also referring to the intervals that are within the chord. It is like a formula or recipe that you can apply to generate 7 add 11 chords. Let's look at an example to clarify this. The C major scale has the following notes. If you add this 11th note F to the C major 7th chord, then you get a C major 7th add 11 with the notes C, E, G, B and F. The C minor 7th add 11 has the notes C, E flat, G, B flat and F. And the C dominant 7th add 11 chord has the notes C, E, G, B flat and F. The major 7th add 11 chord has a tense sound and they are not widely found in songwriting. The semitone distance between the 3rd note and the 4th really builds this tension. Remember that the 4th and 11th notes are the same note. It is slightly less cluttered than the full major 11th chord because it lacks a 9th note. Minor 7th add 11 chords are a little more versatile than the major 7th add 11th chords cousins. They don't sound so dissonant and can be used more widely. This is because there is now a wider distance between the flat 3rd note and the 4th slash 11th compared to the major 7th add 11 chord. I recommend experimenting with them anywhere you find a minor chord, regardless of the key. Through this experimentation you will appreciate the sound of the minor 7th add 11 chord and see how it fits into your songs with the instruments that you use. Dominant 7th add 11 chords are often used in jazz and other styles of music as a substitution for a standard dominant 7th chord. The added 11th interval gives the chord a more dissonant and extended sound which can add tension and dissonance to a chord progression. If you are using them diatonically, which means strictly in a key, 
Then 7th and 11th chords can feature as any of the 7 chords in a major key, except for the 4 and 7 chords. In minor slash Aeolian keys, this would be every chord except for chords 2 and 6. I'll show you some examples now using Hookpad. There are links in the description if you want to get Hookpad and follow along or to learn more. I'll use the key of C major for the examples, but these principles apply to any major key. I'll start with the major 7th at 11. The easiest way to use this chord is as a substitute for the standard major 7th. Check out my video in the description for help with major 7th chords. A common major 7th progression simply alternates between the 1 and 4 chords. This is often heard in ballads. In this version, I'll change the 1 major 7th for major 7th at 11 on the second repeat. Listen to the dissonance this brings the otherwise smooth and relaxing progression. It can be nice to contrast standard triads with extended chords like the major 7th at 11. The 1 chord also has a relationship with the 6 chord. The 6 chord is its relative minor chord. There's a video in the description if you need more help with this concept. Moving from the extra dissonant 1 major 7th at 11 to the standard 6 triad can provide a pleasing sense of resolution. I'll combine both of these ideas in the following progression. Let's now look at the minor 7th at 11 chord. You saw earlier that they can also be used diatonically as more chords in major keys, and they are also a less dissonant sound than major 7th at 11th chords. So they are generally a more useful chord. The simplest use is just to swap out minor 7th chords in a progression for minor 7th at 11. This could be used in a later repeat of a progression to get more mileage out of your ideas, or maybe to highlight a change in emotion or mood in the song. Here's an example with standard minor 7th chords and then minor 7th at 11 chords on the repeat. Listen to the difference in the chord. Minor 7th chords are often paired with major 7th chords in progressions to provide a pleasing sound. You can also do the same with minor 7th at 11 chords. Here's an example of this. Listen to how different the first half sounds with only standard triads compared to the second. Minor 7 add 11 chords are also useful for changing key, like in the next example. I won't go too deeply into the reasons behind this change, but if you want to learn more about modulation, then check out my ultimate guide linked below. This progression will change key from C major to G major. The pivot chord, which is the chord that is used to modulate, will be A minor 7th add 11. The main thing I want you to concentrate on here is how this chord sounds, creating a smooth transition between keys.
Time now to have a look at the dominant 7th add 11 chord. As with the other 7 add 11 chords, you can experiment with using this chord like you would the standard dominant 7th. The most common use for this chord is as the 5 chord. This produces a strong pull back to the tonic 1 chord, as seen in the following progression. As I discussed earlier, the 11th note is actually the same as the 4th note. This 4th note also features in sus4 chords. You can exploit this fact to provide an interesting preview of the 11th note that will feature in your 7 add 11 chords. It is also another idea for recycling later repeats of your progressions. Getting more mileage out of a single chord progression gives you more flexibility as a songwriter and can help you prevent writer's block and finish more of your songs. In this next example, various 7 add 11 chords share a bar with the sus4 version of the chord. Listen to the preview this provides for the 7 add 11 chord yet to be heard. Also note how there is always at least a bar of a different chord between 7 add 11s. Often in chord progressions, less is more when it comes to more exotic or extended chords. <laughs> You just heard a C7 suspended second chord. They are written in notation with a number 7, the letters SUS, -S, and a number 2 after the chord letter. You may also see them referred to as 7 sus 2, dominant sus 2, or dominant 7th sus 2 chords. Now you might be asking, how do I construct the 7 sus 2 chords? 7th suspended second chords have four notes 1st, 2nd, 5th, and flat or minor 7th. These numbers show the notes that make up the 7 sus 2 chord. They are also referring to the intervals that are written within the chord. It is like a formula or recipe that you can apply to generate 7 sus 2 chords. Let's look at an example to clarify this. If you remove the 3rd note from the C major and replace it with the 2nd note D, then you get a C sus 2 chord. And if you do the same thing with the C dominant 7th chord, then you get a C7th suspended 2nd chord. Suspended chords are neither major nor minor. They don't have a major or minor 3rd within them. The lack of a minor or major 3rd in the chord creates an open, almost hollow sound. Dominant chords feature as the 5 chord in major and minor key songs. They create a tension and expectancy that is resolved when the next chord is the tonic 1 chord. This is because the notes in the dominant chord are close enough to the one chord notes that they really pull the listener's ear towards the tonic chord. Dominant seventh chords also contain a tritone interval within them, which has an unstable sound that wants to resolve. The dominant seventh sus2 chord brings the major third down a whole step or tone to a second. This breaks up the tritone and therefore gives the seven sus2 a mellower feel with less pull to the root. Feel free to experiment with 7 sus2 chords in any way that you like. If you are using them diatonically, which means strictly in a key, then 7 sus2 chords will feature as chords 2, 6 and 5 in major keys. In minor keys they would be chords 1, 4 and 7. I'll show you some examples now using Hookpad. There are links in the description if you want to get Hookpad and follow along or to learn more. I'll use the key of C major for the examples, but these principles apply to any major key. In the first example, I'll demonstrate the 7 sus2 chord in its most widely used position as the 5 chord heard before the 1 tonic chord. This is how you would typically use standard dominant 7th chords, and as such is a good starting point for 7 sus2 chords. Listen to the difference between them here.
As you have just heard, 7sus2 chords can struggle to establish their identity. One way to overcome this when you play the 5 chord as a 7sus2 is to pair it with the 5 dominant 7th chord. Here's how that sounds. The 7 sus 2 also works well with its cousin, the 7 sus 4. You may have heard this combination in the Beatles song, Here Comes the Sun. I'll use them in the next example as the 5 chord. Listen to how moving from dominant 7th to 7 sus chord variations creates an interesting rhythmic idea. As I mentioned earlier, you can also use the 7 sus 2 chords as chords 2 and 6 in major keys. This is because you are only changing a single note from the minor 7th chord and are therefore still strictly in the key. So in the key of C major you can use D7 sus 2 and A7 sus 2 chords. In this next example I'll play a progression twice. It will utilise the 2 and 6 minor 7th chords before finishing on the 5 dominant 7th chord. In the second repeat all of these chords will be played as 7 sus 2 chords before ending on the standard dominant 7th. Listen to the difference this brings, providing an open emotive sound and allowing the progression to drift along. Seven sus 2 chords are not widely used. Part of the reason for this is because they are very close to ninth chords and can struggle to differentiate themselves. The ninth note is the same as the second note, and as you learnt earlier, this is contained within the seven sus 2 chord. Look at the G7 sus 2 chord I played you earlier. It has the notes G, A, D, and F. Now compare this to the G dominant ninth chord with the notes. G, B, D, F and A. There is only a single note difference, in this case the major third B, which can often get lost when the 7 sus 2 is heard. A similar thing also occurs with the minor ninth chords. In this next example I will pair minor ninths and dominant ninth chords with the 7 sus 2. Listen out for the similarity but also the pleasing sense that something has changed when they are played after one another. Also note how this progression doesn't start with the one chord as before. Listen to the nature of this slightly different type of progression. You just heard a C 7th suspended 4th chord. They are written in notation with a number 7, the letters S U S, and a number 4 after the chord letter. You may also see them referred to as 7 sus 4, dominant sus 4, or dominant 7th sus 4 chords. Now you might be asking, how do I construct the 7 sus 4 chords? 7th suspended 4th chords have 4 notes, 1st, 4th, 5th, and flat or minor 7th. 
These numbers show the notes that make up the 7 sus4 chord. They are also referring to the intervals that are within the chord. It is like a formula or recipe that you can apply to generate 7 sus4 chords. Let's look at an example to clarify this. If you remove the third note from C major and replace it with the fourth note F, then you get a C sus4 chord. And if you do the same thing with the C dominant 7th chord, then you get a C 7th suspended 4th chord. Suspended chords are neither major nor minor. They don't have a major or minor 3rd within them. The lack of a minor or major 3rd in the chord creates an open sound, while the dissonance between the 4th and 5th creates tension. Dominant chords feature as the 5 chord in major and minor key songs. They create a tension and expectancy that is resolved when the next chord is the tonic 1 chord. This is because the notes in the dominant chord are close enough to the 1 chord notes that they really pull the listener's ear towards the tonic chord. Dominant 7th chords also contain a tritone interval within them, which has an unstable sound that wants to resolve. The dominant 7th sus4 chords bring the major 3rd up half a step or semitone to a 4th. This breaks up the tritone and therefore gives the 7 sus4 a mellower feel with less pull to the root. If you're using them diatonically, which means strictly in a key, then 7 sus4 chords can feature where minor chords are used, as well as the 5 chord. This means chords 2, 3 and 6 in major keys, and 1, 4 and 5 in minor keys. I'll show you some examples now using Hookpad. There are links in the description if you want to get Hookpad and follow along or to learn more. I'll use the key of C major for the examples, but these principles apply to any major key. In this first example, I'll demonstrate the 7 sus4 chord in its most widely used position as the 5 chord heard before the 1 tonic chord. This is how you would typically use standard dominant 7th chords, and as such are a good starting point for 7 sus4 chords. Listen to the difference between them here. Because they only have a note difference, a common chord change is to move from 5 7 sus4 to 5 dominant 7th. Here's how that sounds in the previous progression. As I mentioned earlier, you can also use the 7 sus4 chords with the minor chord root notes from major keys. This is because you are only changing a single note from the minor 7th chord, and are therefore still strictly in the key. So in the key of C major you can use D7 sus4, E7 sus4, and A7 sus4 chords. In this next example I'll play a progression twice. It will utilise the 2, 3 and 6 minor 7th chords before finishing on the 5 dominant 7th chord. In the second repeat all of these chords will be played as 7 sus4 chords. Listen to the difference this brings, providing an open emotive sound and highlighting the versatility of this chord.
You may have heard that the fourth note I've been using is also known as an 11th note. This explains why the dominant 11th chord contains all of the dominant 7th sus4 notes within it. For example, you know that C7 sus4 has the notes C, F, G and B flat. C dominant 11th has the notes C, E, G, B flat, D and F. Despite these chords sometimes being used interchangeably, they are distinct chords as you can see. In this next example, I'll split the 4th and 8th bars in two, using the 5 chord 7 sus4 as a preview of the 5 dominant 11th chord to come. Listen to the dense sophistication that the dominant 11th has. Seven sus4 chords are also great for key changes. This is because they are neither major nor minor and can therefore provide some ambiguous cover for a modulation. I'll give you a simple example now, but for a deeper dive into key changes, check out our playlist. I'll start in the key of C major and have a target key of D major. Look at the chords in both of these keys. A typical technique would be to look at any chords the keys have in common and use them for the modulation. So in this example, E minor and G major are in both keys, but you know that the five dominant chord to one tonic chord change provides tension and resolution that can really establish a key. So being able to use A major to D major would be great for the planned key change. Unfortunately, A major is not in the key of C major, but as you learned earlier, seven sus4 chords can be used as the two, three, six, and five chords. So if I make the six chord in the key of C major into a seven sus4, it becomes a seven sus4. This is the same as the five seven sus4 chord in the target key of D major. By using the seven sus4, we now have a perfect bridge between the keys without using any notes from outside of the respective scales. Listen to how smooth this key change is. You've learned all about chord types, but this is only one part of the songwriting universe. Watch the playlist on screen now to write a complete song.